My name is Tatoma, as I already indicated. I'm uh, going to deliver you a presentation on the deforestation process and the emergence of FLR in Ethiopia. And uh, it is uh, part of the training, of course, but it is almost the reflection and uh, the reflection and the train slogan. Uh, just to prepare in mind for the basic training, which will be given by the uh, our colleagues from the Vena. <laughs> okay. This is the outline of my presentation. I'll talk a little bit on the forest resource area of the, our country. Then I'll proceed to deforestation, forest degradation, and the drivers. Then impacts of the conversion of forest lands into other land uses. Then the evolution and emergence of forest landscape restoration. Equipment. Then finally, I will. And talk a little bit on the prospects of FLR in Ethiopia. Uh, I think it is logical to talk a little bit on the policy of this country when we are talking about forest landscape restoration. As you know, forests are the major components of the natural resources of our country. And uh, by forest resources, we mean the natural high forests that are now uh, found the southwestern corner of the, the country, the woodlands and dryland forests, which are mainly found in the drylands, the lowlands, the plantation forests, now there, which are now flourishing across the nation due to uh, various interventions like Green Lake Legacy Initiative and so on, the bamboo forests and the arbor forests. This combined together uh, will give us what we call forest resources. These resources are immense and unsubstitutable economic, social, and environmental significance. Uh, at the beginning of the 19th, the year zero, the forest cover of the country was estimated at 40% of the area of Ethiopia, according to the IFA, Ethiopian Forest Reduction Program. In 2016, which is the recent official data of the forest cover program, Ethiopia had about 17.22 million hectares of forest resources, 15.5% of the land mass of the country. So we can see the, the difference. There is a clear difference between the 90s <coughs> and, the, and 2000s forest cover of Ethiopia. Uh, we can see in detail the 2016 uh, forest cover of Ethiopia in detail. Uh, this is a data from the then Ministry of uh, Environment, Forest, and Climate Change. Uh, see the satellite based uh, uh, inventory of the forest or the forest resource of the country. Uh, you can see that natural forests they comprise 4.66% 4, 4, 4. 6, 6, 6, 6, 6 of the, the land mass of the country, the country at that time. Woodland is about 9.50%, plantation forest 0.73%, bamboo about 0.46%, totally 55.5% of the uh, land mass was covered with the uh, forest uh, in 2016. Uh, now we are in 2022. Uh, there is a, a trend of in increment in the plantation forest. And uh, there is an official or unofficial uh, guess of uh, having a forest cover about 17 or 18 percent of the, the land mass of the country. So the difference 
in 90s and 20s, the difference is mainly due to the shrinkage and decline of the natural forests due to deforestation and illegal, illegal cuttings. Uh, that, that, that is a point that makes the difference. Uh, some studies claim an annual deforestation rate of 85,000. In 90s, in 1900, it was uh, uh, suggested that it was about 92,000 hectares uh, per year. Now, recent, this is the recent uh, data, about 85,000 hectares of plus natural forest are being uh, deforested uh, in Ethiopia. On the other hand, the plantation forest is due to mainly plantations of uh, eucalyptus, acacia licorns, and other exotic species are in uh, an increasing trend. Of course, uh, I didn't get the exact uh, figure of uh, the coverage of plantation forests, but it is assumed that it is an increasing trend. The existing natural forests are mainly located in the southern and southwestern corners of the country. Yes. This is a plantation forest, picture from the plantation forest, bamboo forest. Uh, the forest resource of Ethiopia are uh, the deforestation, forest degradation, and the drivers. That is a, a topic of this presentation. The forest resources of Ethiopia are dwindling at an alarming rate due to natural and, more importantly, at anthropogenic factors. And the loss of forest resources in Ethiopia has been both inside deforestation and quality, forest degradation. No. Large areas of the country are now denuded of vegetation. Deforestation is a conversion of forest land use to other land use, or depletion of the forest crown cover to less than ten percent. This is the uh, this is the definition of the deforestation. When we come to forest degradation, it is the reduction of the capacity of a forest to provide goods and service. So deforestation refers to the quantity of forest being uh, cleared from the uh, forest land and forest liberation refers to the quality of the service of that forest. So forest liberation is the reduction of the capacity of a forest to provide goods and service. Most of the Ethiopian rural landscapes are characterized by high rates of deforestation and the forest degradation. Loss, the loss is especially severe in areas where most of the population lives and where most of the cultivated land exists. Let us see the, the drivers of this deforestation and forest degradation. The direct drivers of deforestation and forest degradation are more of anthropogenic and include mainly expansion of farmland, pasture land, settlement and urban areas due to rapid population growth. Uh, mostly we refer, mostly we refer the farmland, but there is also an expansion of pasture land. There is an expansion of settlement and urban areas due to this uh, uh, rapid uh, population growth. The other direct driver of deforestation and uh, forest division is high dependence on biomass energy. Because uh, some documents, some literature indicates that 95% of the nation's energy consumption is from the biomass. So uh, it's a, uh, it is a major cause of uh, deforestation and forest degradation. Indirect drivers include such as weak law enforcement. Indirect drivers mostly related to policies, legal provisions, and so on. And uh, weak law enforcement uh, can be cited as an indirect driver of deforestation and uh, forest degradation. We may have uh, policies, proclamations, regulations, and so on. But unless and otherwise they properly enforce it, uh, they will not have uh, any positive impact. So weak law enforcement can be cited as a direct driver. Lack of land use money, which is, uh, as it is common, uh, lack of strong forest organizations at different levels. I think there should be a very strong institution in order to uh, implement 
the policies, the proclamations, the regulations, <laughs> the rules, uh, so that uh, they will be implemented properly at different levels. But unless and otherwise these institutions are in place, uh, there is a problem. With institutional linkage, but by the way, uh, uh, forests also have an impact on other sectors like transport, energy, and so on. So, an institution from that sector, unless and otherwise uh, integrated with forestry, they will have uh, a negative impact. So, weak institutional linkage, uh, we can cite it as. Uh, an indirect driver of uh, deforestation and forest degradation. So deforestation and forest have resulted in serious ecological and social economic problems. No agricultural productivity, food insecurity, and poverty. Let us see the impacts of the conversion of forest lands into other land use. Deforestation and forest degradation involves a change process. In the process, the characteristics of a forest forest land and its surroundings will be negatively affected. The value and production of goods and services of forest will decline, as I've already mentioned. Deforestation and forest degradation cause massive land and environmental degradation, as we can see from the picture. Nowadays, broad scales of land and environmental degradation are evident across much of the landscape of the country. And this land degradation has led to the decline of agricultural productivity and uh, poverty. The impact becomes a threat to sustainable agriculture and forestry. We can broadly classify impacts mm -hmm. of deforestation and forest degradation into two categories, environmental <coughs> and social economy. Environmental impact impacts include, as you can see from the list of environmental impact, loss of vegetation, loss of biodiversity, Soil erosion, loss of soil fertility, land degradation, desertification, and climate change. Mm -hmm. These are the environmental, some of the environmental, the major environmental impacts of deforestation and forest degradation. Uh, from this diagram, we can see that these uh, elements, these factors which contribute to uh, deforestation, for, forest degradation, are intermingled or interconnected each other. One becomes the cause or effect of the other. The biodiversity loss, which is caused by deforestation, can be a cause for uh, desertification. Then the desertification to climate change. So they are interlinked and they are interconnected. This picture shows the impact of climate change. The goats and uh, the sheep they can't get uh, uh, browsable or uh, grazable uh, material due to uh, lack of the pasture land. These are the socioeconomic impacts uh, from deforestation and forest degradation, decline of wood production, and other forest products, and then timber forest products also. Shortage of fuel, construction and industrial wood, Gap between demand and supply of the forest products increased, decline of product diversity and income, decline of agricultural productivity, food insecurity, and finally, uh, poverty. <clears throat> Depletion and deterioration of forests and other natural resources will reduce the quality of life of the local people and cause social instability. As you know, this forestry is a, a rural activity, a rural activity. So the rural community will be negatively affected. Their social economic, their livelihood will be negatively affected. The situation will constrain and compromise the economic, social, and environmental base that will be gained from forests. So deforestation and forest degradation will make us uh, to not obtain the social, environmental, and economic benefits that will be gained from forests. It will eventually force the rural population to be caught in a resource degradation poverty trap. This resource de land degradation or resource degradation and poverty are, they are linked. They are in a vicious cycle. Whenever uh, so someone, individuals or local community impoverished 
or either to a poverty, they will they will start to exploit the uh, forest resources and other natural resources nearby. <coughs> then the resource generation will bring also poverty. So they, they will enter into a vicious cycle of resource degradation, poverty trap. So such a condition will uh, call for uh, an action. Uh, the evolution and emergence of forest land, landscape resource, FLR in Ethiopia. Uh, I, when we talk about FLR, we can, uh, we should uh, a little bit talk about the historical background of uh, different uh, forest activities related to FLR. The historical background of FLR could take us back to the previous regions, although also the efforts during those periods bear different names. It is in the 1970s that Ethiopia officially recognized the importance of embarking on tree planting and soil and water conservation in response to deforestation and land regulation. It was during the military region that huge physical and soil water conservation campaign was launched in road stricken areas, road strike areas. The initiative was supported by a food for work program. Next. 1994, the Ethiopian Forest Action Program has been launched with a proposal of different strategies to increase the forest cover in the country. Then, the concept and practice of integrated watershed management as a comprehensive approach to tackle land degradation uh, problems has also come into existence. In 2003, the Agriculture Development Policy identified agroforestry and wood lotus as a main strategy for, cover, for increasing the forest cover of the country. In 2007, the first national forest policy, I don't know whether you know this document or not. It is uh, a booklet, a type of booklet. You remember, Dr. Osman? Yeah. Uh, this policy is a policy, national forest policy and the strategy of forest. It was issued, which recognized different ownership of forest resources. Since then, JFM, FM started to be practiced in areas with forests with the support of NGOs like Farm Africa, SOSAN, GIZ, NABU, ETC. In the meantime, area exposure as a strategy for rehabilitation of degraded lands started to be flourished in the northern parts of the, the country. Then, Millennium, Millennium Tree Plant was launched in 2008. Uh, then, all this, Efforts as well, aiming at bringing once more ecosystem services and ecological integrity and functionality into degraded landscapes. All that efforts will contribute on one way or another to the restoration and the rehabilitation of degraded landscapes. Hence, the concept of forest land restoration has emerged. FLR can be defined as a plan process that aims to regain ecological integrity and enhance human and human well-being in deforested or degraded forest landscapes. Since 2011, various national initiatives, initiatives that support FLR came to the picture. The famous CRGE, Climate Resilient Green Economy in 2011, SLM, Sustainable Land Management, which is a very huge national project focused on soil and water management, soil and water conservation, tree planting and water management, the national red strategy, the national forest sector development program, it's the tree based landscape restoration, which was launched in 2018, forest development conservation and strategic proclamation, and finally the green legacy initiative. Along with these initiatives, various international commitments is emerging around the world in connection to forest lands, forest landscape restoration. We know we remember the Bone Challenge. We know we remember the new the New York Declaration and so on. Ethiopia made the largest pledge, pledge aiming to restore about 15 million hectares of uh, degraded uh, forest landscapes, and it is. Uh, the largest commitment, I think, the largest pledge uh, in Africa. This is in addition to the plan to manage 7 million hectares of forests as part of the CRG. 
So uh, totally it will be it will be here. So far, more than one million hectares of dairy lands have been uh, estimated to be restored through different means. Through PFM, through area exclusion, through agroforestry, through afforestation and reforestation, and so on. <coughs> afforestation, reforestation, tree planting, for rehabilitation of degraded lands, agroforestry, PFM, area exclusion, green lands, all this uh been uh, implemented in the last many years and they contribute to uh forest landscape restoration in one way or us so what will be the prospect or the future of aflr ethiopia there are many opportunities uh, to increase the number of trees in ethiopia landscapes from the picture you can you can perceive that a total of 82 million hectares is estimated to have a potential for three phase landscape restoration. This is the result of the study of the Ministry of uh, Environment, Forest, and Climate Change in 2008. So, 82 million hectares is very huge. So, we have a very huge potential of uh, promoting and implementing forest, forest landscape restoration. So, Apart from the already mentioned interventions, uh, restocking of degraded forests can be, can be considered. Buffer plantations, three based buffer zones along rivers and lakes are some of the APLR options recommended in these potential areas. Thank you very much. <laughs> like general overview of forest resources in Ethiopia, deforestation and poor degradation in the country, impact of deforestation and poor degradation, like uh, environmental, social economy, etc., and uh, poor landscape restoration efforts in Ethiopia. Various policies, strategies, action on, on the ground, on the ground, etc. And finally, prospects of FNR in Ethiopia. Yes. The main uh, focus of the rooms. Before we break, I can ask one or two um, questions and comments. Very brief. Yeah, I think uh, the slide I've seen 150 million hectares. Uh, we need to say 50 million hectares, hopefully. That has to be corrected because uh, uh, our colleagues from Vienna, you know, it's 15 million hectares, uh, and then uh, 17, 17 million hectares, I'm saying for uh, Sorry, seven. <laughs> 15 plus seven. 15 plus seven. 15 plus seven. One hundred fifty is the global, the global point. Global, right? Yeah, that is the global point. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. ours is fifteen. One hundred. Yeah. 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 Y
I really uh, appreciate that uh, uh, you give a very good uh, background and that will be a very good starting point for this uh, 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 training. So um, uh, this is uh, highly appreciated. The only comment that we have is uh, uh, some of these data which we are presented here. Uh, there are some updated studies uh, on most of these things, including the post cover of the country and uh, even uh, the, 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 the demand, the people section rates. Yeah. Uh, even from uh, the recent submission uh, of Ethiopia to UN frequency on the, on the forest cover as well as uh, the forestation rates, the recent PAU 2020 report. Um, and on all those things, there are some updated uh, data about uh, this uh, major uh, data which were presented here in the, in the, in the document. And, uh, I also see that uh, there is a problem of data sharing from the FED side because uh, the, um, even recent studies of 2021 on uh, on uh, the plantation uh, of uh, the country where there are and, uh, even in terms of species um, and the composition. So uh, I think this is one of the things which we need to offer uh, in the sharing for the uh, state different studies commissioned by uh, the project especially very recently. And uh, as a voice, uh, I would like to uh, thank you for this very comprehensive uh, presentation that could give a very nice kick off on this. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The data. Uh, I should also say. Uh, can we mention the area on which this data is positioned around certain minimum? Okay, yeah, so, I think we will have next presentation so that you can see areas uh, recovered by yeah. There are two following this there are two presentations. One is the national funds. The achievements of the forest land restoration. We have the proper for the receive from that. If there are no comments now. We will have we will break for for coffee. For our colleagues from Vienna will also break for coffee. About 50 to know the time. We will, we will be back at 10 something time. <laughs>